Mmm, coffee. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Saturday Session brought to you by LearnMQL4.com. We learn how to program your own scripts, custom indicators, and expert advisors using the MQL4 programming language. We're going to pick up where we left off in the last Saturday sessions with all of the shortcuts in MetaTrader 4. But before I get away from my site here, I want to make an announcement to those of you who are subscribed to my site and you've been asking for the ability to speed me up like we do here on YouTube. We get into a boring part of the YouTube video and we speed it up and we go, now you can do it. I'm changing out the player, video player, in my courses to where you now have the option to make me talk like a chipmunk if you want to. So there you go, guys. Now, let's get into all of those MetaTrader 4 shortcuts. You're going to want to get your pencil out and jot some of these down. Let's get started. Jim Dandy presents Saturday Sessions brought to you by LearnMQL4.com. Videos all about MQL4 coding and trading Forex. All right, so let's get started, shall we? You got your, you got your pencil ready? So... Well, first, we'll start off with the uh, control key combinations that I'm aware of. Uh, the first one is kind of hard to uh, figure out what it does if you don't have your chart set up the right direction. You'll notice on the bottom of this, there's a MACD and a stochastic down here where the control A will even those up like this. It'll kind of give them equal parts of the screen if you've got one that's way bigger than the other ones or whatever. Control A uh, controls how these are displayed. Control B right here brings up your object list. Sometimes you may bring up your object list and it looks like this, but you have to put list all and all of these objects that are say are on this chart are in this right here. So that's control B. Uh, control C, you know, like copy. I'm not sure if that does anything in MetaTrader or not. Control D definitely does something. It brings up the data window. And the data window is when you mouse over a certain candle. It will show you all the information about that uh, particular time series array location on the chart. Control E, we learned last week, disables the auto trading expert up there. Control F is for focus. You push Control F and you get your little crosshairs here. Control G turns the grid on and off. I very seldom use the grid. Control H, if you watch up there in the top left corner, Control H turns the open, high, low, close on and off. Control I brings up the indicators. While we're here, we may as well delete a few of these. Control L, I always think of liquidity because Control L brings the volume numbers up on the bottom. How many ticks came in on that particular candle? It's not the volume of the number of uh, lots traded or anything like that. It's merely the number of ticks that happened in that candle. Doesn't tell you whether they were up or down or what. But that is the volume amount. Control L. Control M brings up the market watch window where all of your indicator of where all of your symbols are listed. Control N brings up the navigator, which is the same as pushing this right here. Do it with Control N, like so. Brings up the navigator. Control O brings up the options for the platform. You know, where you uh, check your community settings and your server settings and all of those things. Control P will actually make it print this chart here. And what you want to do is you want to print in landscape mode to make it look right. Normally you'll go somewhere like this and you'll click landscape. And then when you hit the print button, it'll print this chart out. Control R brings up the tester. You remember from last week, if you get the fat finger, you'll bring up the tester and Turn auto trading on and off at the same time. That's control R. Control S is an interesting one. Control S will let you print out. Uh, let's see, we have the Euro USD one hour uh, data loaded right now in this chart. If it'll print it out in a comma separated, you know, Excel spreadsheet 
type file if you want it to, or you can have it printed out in an HTML file. Let's, let's do it here just for kicks. Let's say we want to print a Euro USD 60 minute HTM. Let me say, yes, it already exists. I know it already exists. It looks something like this. Did you know that you could do that? Control T, of course, brings the terminal up at the, at the bottom. Control U is an interesting one. It brings up the symbols window. And have you ever been trading in a pair and you wondered what the swap paid or something like that? Let's look here on the Euro USD. It'll give you all the information, the number of digits, stop level, all of those kinds of things. The swap long and the swap short. If you want to know what that was, let's say on the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. You can see that if you're actually long, it actually pays swap on this account. So that was control U. Now remember last week, control W, we said will completely close this window. So I'm not going to hit it or it'll close the chart. Control Y turns these period separator lines on and off like this. That's control Y. And control Z is, is an undo. Let's say, uh, Let's say we drop a horizontal line on the chart and you've probably done this before you dropped a, a horizontal line on the chart and you dropped a stochastic on the chart. Let's say something like this and then you have them both selected and you don't realize it. And when you hit the delete key, you delete both of them. You're like, oh, I didn't mean to delete my stochastic. Well, you can put you can push control Z and undo that. If you push backspace, you will just do the last thing undo the last thing that you did and you push control Z and bring them back so play around with the control Z in the backspace uh, whenever you accidentally delete something off of your chart or you want to take things off of your chart uh, one at a time that's control Z now there's a few alt shortcuts alt 1 will change to bar charts alt 2 is candle charts and our alt 3 is line charts so that's not all of the keys, but that's most of them. You know, of course, that F4 moves us back and forth from the terminal to our editor. F1 uh, brings up the help file on how to run the terminal. F2 will bring up the history center. F3 will bring up our global variable window in case you've got something that's using global variables. F8 is the same as right clicking here and selecting properties in other words it brings up this window here alternate B brings up the depth of market window and of course if you don't have your chart set to scroll to the end all of the time you can push page up to go to scroll back one page at a time or you can push home to go all the way to the beginning of your chart history or end to go all the way to the end of it Let's see, what's some of the other things that I can show you? Uh, you may know, let me push control M and bring the market watch up. You may know that when you don't have any charts open at all, that you can just uh, throw a chart out here and it will open that chart. That's Australian dollar, US dollar. However, if you drop a different one there, like the pound dollar, instead of opening an, an, another pound dollar chart and leaving the Australian dollar chart alone, it will just replace the Australian dollar chart with the pound dollar chart. Well, let me show you uh, something that you can do that you probably didn't know. Now the pound dollar chart is open. We're going to take the Australian dollar chart, I mean the Australian dollar symbol, but we're not going to drop it out here. We're going to drop it right up here on the header bar of the terminal. And it will open the Australian dollar in addition to the pound dollar. So you can drop the Euro dollar out here, the USD CAD out here. Whoops, I got to drop it up here, don't I? Euro USD up here and the pound dollar up here like so. Now I have four charts open. I can push alternate R and it will arrange them all for me. Let me get this out of the way now. Push alternate R. And the last thing I want to show you is something that I, I made a video about a very long time ago on, on uh, YouTube. And it was about how to get it to zoom in like you want it to. Let's, put a, let's say we're looking at this little area right here on the chart and we want to zoom in on it. So we push the plus key and then it's way over here and we, we keep moving it over here and we push the plus key and it, it moves over here again. We're like, why in the heck does it keep moving over here? Why won't it stay in the middle? 
Well, the reason is because it's not zooming in on this. It's zooming in on whatever candle is over here on the edge. If I was to hit the plus right now, you can see it zoomed in here. And the reason it's doing that is because this little bitty carrot down here in the corner needs moved to the middle. It's going to zoom to wherever this is. So let me zoom back out again now. So if we move our yellow box right in the middle of that, now when we zoom in, it's going to zoom in wherever this is at. Now, if you do not see this, this is the same color as your grid. So if you have your grid set so that it you cannot see it, if you had the grid set as the same color of your chart, you're never going to see this show up. Well, that's enough for this week. I've gone way over anyway on my time. But if you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down there. Remember, if you have a question that you would like to ask me, use the hashtag Ask Jim, and I'll try to get to your questions if I can answer. If it's something I can answer quickly in one of these short videos. So I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Remember, Tech Tip Tuesday is coming up Tuesday, so leave me some kind of a topic to make for Tech Tip Tuesday, and I'll see you then. Pip -pip.